What's up, pickle peeps? Now, who here has heard of mind mapping before? Hopefully everybody, because you clicked on this video. So what we are doing today is looking at mental organization systems. And I'm not talking about like organizing your thoughts in your head. I can't help you with that. I can't master that myself. I'm talking about getting them out of your head and just dumping them onto paper or more usefully into something on your computer. And we are gonna look at doing just that process so you can get amazing large amounts of work done very, very quickly. So mind mapping is a visual organization system. Um, I don't know any of you guys, I have a master's in writing. So when I was in college, I would go through a process that I called brain dumping. And it was literally to get knock out stories and stuff um, for my master's programs and whatnot that we were working on. And it was just the rule of the game was I would set a timer for three minutes, <laughs> which in this case seemed like a very long time. And I would put my hands on the keyboard and I needed to type and I could not stop typing until that timer went. And it just, it would start out with a lot of blah, 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 one, two, three kind of things <laughs> just to get me going until I would start just any random thought that came in my head would end up on the dock. And then you had to edit that doc and like comb through it and try to find like the one nugget that was good. So I'm not really recommending that process for you, Pickle Peep. Instead, we're going to look at mind mapping to on a specific goal and we're going to do it all in a program you love, know and love, Canva. So <laughs> are you ready to get started? Let's do it. But first, my name is Melissa Pickle. Welcome to The Handmade How, home of the Pickle Peeps, the place where we break down the how of handmade marketing so you can focus on those delicious profits. All right, now, to the computer! Okay, Pickle Peep, here we go. We are on Canva. Now, what I'm gonna teach you, you can do on Canva Pro, or you can do on Canva free, doesn't matter. Um, if you don't, haven't tried Canva before, I definitely have a link down below uh, where you can get a free trial of Canva Pro. Yes, I'm an affiliate. I use this program every day. So let's get into it and figuring out mind maps. So you could absolutely start this raw from scratch, no problem. Um, but you might be thinking to yourself, Melissa, I'm not even sure what a mind map looks like. That's okay. We got you covered. You can come here into templates, just switch stick at... <laughs> click in there and we are going to search for mind map and they actually have it as a section of templates so yay go canva click on that one and okay so here we go these are the templates that canva has for us to work with this way you're not starting from like cursing blinker syndrome, empty page syndrome, blank page syndrome. We don't want to start there. We want to start with a template. So to make life easy. Now you'll see ones that have little crowns on them. Those mean they are pro um, only. And if it doesn't have a crown, then you can get it on free. I kind of love this one right here with the light bulb. I also love this one as far um, my kind of my favorites on here are the ones with the light bulb if I'm going for fun and then if I'm going for like big process I like this one right here. So I'm actually going to work in this one right here going to click on it and it'll open into this so beautiful. Now you can change out the co the colors, the fonts, all that stuff. I'm not worried about that right now. To me, that's not important at all. The idea of mind maps is to get content down fast, get it out of your brain. And the beauty of a mind map is unlike a Word doc, unlike a spreadsheet, any of those that have an intrinsic order to it, a mind map is just literally brain vomit on the screen. Beautiful, right? So when you don't know even where to start, you don't have to worry about putting things in a logical order or having to move things around later, or if you do, it'll be easy. Um, so it gives a lot of mental freedom here. You can take, um, your brain can take a deep breath, whew, relax and start working on ideas. So let's go through, we're actually gonna do a couple of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my page. Boom, and boom. And we're going to set these up. The first one I want to do a mind map for events, physical events. My next one. Okay. So my next one I want to do as a collection launch things I don't like in here. They didn't group any of the stuff. So quick note on this, click on your background, hold the shift key and click on your text to get both of them. Or you can just kind of click and drag your mouse over both, but that's also going to get a bar in the background. We don't really need that. <laughs> okay, so background and 
that and then group them right up here. Then if you keep typing blah, 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 you'll see that your shape stretches instead of just your words overriding your, sh your shape. So that's just a quick tip in there that's kind of nice. So we can look at a collection launch. We have an event, a collection launch, and then for our third one here, my third one, I'm going to look at content strategy. Boom. All right, so these are the three ones that I'm kind of kind of just dump on right here, so just so you guys can get a hang of the process and how it applies to different situations. Alrighty, and we'll have them timestamp below. So if you're like, Melissa, I don't do events, then skip the event one. Melissa, I don't do collection launches, skip that one. Melissa, I don't have a content strategy, don't skip that one. <laughs> Keep the content strategy one, okay? All right, let's go for it. So for events, you might have... Um, a first thing in here, if you're doing in-person events, you need a show schedule, right? Boom. You need to know where you're going to be. Uh, next up, you might have um, products. What are you going to have? What do you have to prep for products? Another thing with events, you might have something like your marketing for your event, obviously. Other things for events, you might have packing logistics. And then if you're really good, you're going to prep on follow-up. Actually, I'm going to change that to lead gen and follow-up. Boom. Okay, so those are just like off the top of my head, different asset aspects of doing in-person events. So a show schedule might be, I need to, what do I need to do for, to create a show schedule? So I need to reach out to previous events. Their sizing on this is going to drive me crazy. If your spacing in between is too big, come over here from 1.4, I'm going to change it to a 1.2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just like, boom, group because this is gonna drive me crazy, group. I'm actually gonna do that to all of them, so I'll be back in a quick sec. Okay, everything's grouped now, so it shouldn't like be driving me crazy. All right, so we said show schedule. We're gonna reach out to previous events. We might need to research new events, and you might also want to try new markets. So you might look at reaching out to your previous events that you've done, make sure that you're on the schedule. Are they repeating? Are they doing the show again this year? Or are they not? Um, research new events that you could do and trying new markets. So if you usually do farmer's markets, maybe you look at a craft show. If you usually do craft shows, maybe you look at an art show or a festival. If you usually do festivals, like look at what else is in your area. Like you might look at geographically or you might look at thematically. In my jewelry business, we focus on Scottish Highland Games. That is where we sell the most of our product. We do that and we have a one Viking festival and one craft show that we do. But the majority of our stuff is Scottish Highland Games. We have found that those people who attend those shows like my jewelry and are willing to spend the most money. I get the best sales at those events. So for me, when I'm researching stuff, I'm going to be looking for more of those style events are those new events coming up like i know for me even though i just chain mail ren fairs people weren't shopping at the ren fairs that i could get into and they're not doing the price points of my products they were more concerned about buying roses and turkey legs i do viking markets so like you gotta learn like where are your people first off where are your people that are going to shop the most with you and then um secondly what events are those people going to if your people like juried art shows great um now it might be a geography issue right there, like where are they, how many are nearby you, or whatnot. So decide on that. That also kind of goes into packing and logistics right there. Um, so for your products, for events, do you have to make sure that you are looking at products that you have um, stocked on supplies? Production schedule. If you were at the um, Handmade Success Summit that I hosted, one of the amazing interviews we had was with Allison Lee. She talked about backwards production method on making sure you have the stock to sell. <laughs> Right? Um, another thing with products is do you have appropriate amounts of packaging, right? So I'm kind of setting these up as things that you can put giant check marks on. I love scratching things off lists. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so with your products, stocked on supplies, stocked on products, stocked on packaging, because, ooh, that packaging, that can be, like, nasty, right? <laughs> so in packing and logistics, do you have enough display? materials could be included in packing and logistics. This is just like, it's, it's brain dumping right here. Brain vomiting on your thing. Um, do you need hotels? Do you need gas? Do you need, um, do you need a cash bank? Um, or make sure your credit card reader is updated or research the sales tax where you're going to be. At one point I had 13 different sales tax IDs, uh, because I 
traveled to 13 different states. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> All right, packing and logistics, display materials, hotels, all of that. Like, do you have, is your tent in good shape if you're doing outdoor events? Like, all that stuff. Are your tables all good? Your boxes all work? Do you have, do you need to wash tablecloths? Do you need to get a new banner? Do you need to um, put together, like, QR code display stuff? Hint, 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 hint that's coming soon. <laughs> All right, lead gen and follow up. So do you have a method of collecting email addresses? One of the ways that worked really great for me, feel free to steal this, was I would have a giveaway bucket. I had like an old fashioned mailbox, it looked really cool. And um, I had tickets and people put their name and email address in there. And I had a whole spiel, a whole script that I would say so many times a day that I wanted a Staples easy button to just press to repeat it for me. <laughs> And I would talk about people like if they love the stuff, but they weren't willing to shop that day. It's like, oh, make sure that you enter the giveaway. Um, you do not need to be here to win. Prize is a $25 gift card to the online shop. Um, only uh, it's free to play. Only price is a email address. And... I would tell them all the cool things about being on my email list. Like, yes, this will means you will be on my email list. So you will know um, new collections coming out, where I'm going to be, and be the first to know about Black Friday sales. All good things, right? Like pre-framing in their head that they should be excited to get my emails. My God. Yep. Just give it a couple and I'm straight on into it. Whew. <laughs> And that worked really, really great for getting people on my email list. The only bad part was that I would get home and I would have to read people's handwriting and manually enter all those, all that data. <sighs> and then like, you, you know it. Like I even worked at a doctor's office, but sometimes reading people's handwriting, it's hard. All right. So how are you going to, how are you going to get them, get their info? And it's not just that they made a per if they made one purchase with you, then it's likely they'll make another purchase with you in the future if you give them that opportunity. It is on us, the sellers, to give the shoppers opportunities to shop with us, okay? I'm pretty sure I have gone on about that in other videos. Where are my challenge? I don't remember. But we need to be giving them opportunities to shop. So if they're not buying, it's because we're not giving them opportunities to per make purchases. So you need to have, for lead gen and follow-up, a way to collect their information. You need a indoctrination sequence. So or you need from there a schedule. Like, put it on your calendar. Schedule to input data. Like I just said, like, you get their email addresses. Now you got to put the information in or you have to organize the information. Something, unless you have an automated one, which is awesome. And then you need to have a welcome or indoctrination sequence for them. Um, now, honestly, this welcome or indoctr indoctrination sequence, I could pull off from my mind map without being like, okay, what kind of emails am I going to send them? Boom, right there. And you can see how these things get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's one of the reasons I don't care for Canva for doing mind maps is because you're locked in on a canvas size, but... We're not going there. So this is a simple way to do it. And then for events, if you have marketing for your events, so you might have, if you're doing your emails and then you might have your social media, you might do lives, you might do all that stuff. I highly encourage anyone who does in-person shows, do lives, streams at the show when you're bored on those very rare chances before it goes crazy, do a live stream. All right, so that might be a mind map for events. Now let's look at a collection launch. So mind map, like what's all the pieces? What's everything going on in a collection launch? So we're going to have the theme or the concy and whatnot. We'll have things like the products, the marketing. You're going to have the pre-marketing and then you might have the post-marketing in your theme. So that's going to be like, um, really you're picking the theme that might involve curating photos. You don't know what I'm talking about. Join the gift guide challenge. And the cool thing with themes that I like is you can pick up ancillary content. So it's never just about your products. Like what's the other stuff you can talk about? Your themes kind of drive that ancillary content. So we're not getting further than that. In your products, you actually have to, you know, research products, make products, or source them. You're gonna have photos and description. You guys, I'm sure that as you're doing this, you're gonna pull out a million more things than what I'm doing on just like this super fast, just dump right here. Pre-marketing, countdown. What else can you do ahead of time? Teasers. 
schedule, SM and email. And then your post marketing, follow ups behind the scenes and some of my favorites are order ups <laughs> all right so that's be a very quick uh, brain dump for a collection launch um let's look at doing the last one on here a content strategy so if you have a content strategy i'm going to talk here um my friend Raging Roberts does a social media challenge where she really covers on this, like having that general content strategy. So it's kind of that base foundation level. If you have nothing else going on or you're so busy, you can't post other things that are like current and going on right now that you have that backbone of content that's always running. So hopefully that makes sense. And she talks there a lot about the JK5 beautiful right here. So if you're looking at concert, you're like, but I run out of things to say, then pick aspects of your life. So the JK five, which we're going to follow, we're going to dump on here involves two, um, business things. I think two business things and three personal things. So for me, I would talk about jewelry. I would talk about superheroes and stories other things that I personally love, hiking, travel, and I'm a marketing geek. So these are all the different things that I could talk about to do my business. So looking at these, then you can go deeper on what you love. So jewelry, I'd be like shooting, crystals, colors, all that kind of stuff. So you can see how you can very, very quickly here, like give yourself pillars or stuff to talk about. If I was looking at this for YouTube right here, it could be biz books, gift guides and holidays, tech and Canva tips, <laughs> like you're seeing right here. Superhero story stays. And then the other one coming in here would be like beyond just general marketing would be unboxing fans. No, not rotary fans. Like your fan, your business fans. And that gives you a clue as to things that are coming up this year. <laughs> so there we go. This is just a very, very quick tutorial on mind mapping. I encourage you guys go in, like take two schools of thought, one, sit down, take some time, grab a glass of wine, ponder, or a cup of coffee and figure out what you're doing. On the other side, if you're like me and I'm like, I gotta get it out of my brain. <laughs> set the timer, I'm a big fan of timers, and just get going on, just get it out of your head, doesn't matter if it's dumb, doesn't matter if it's stupid, doesn't matter if it doesn't make any sense, get it out of your head and onto the screen or onto a piece of paper if you have to go and use it with a pencil, go for it. But this is kind of fun on Canva and then like, honestly, download it as a PDF or a JPEG, print it out, and then I like taking a big marker and putting check, box, uh, check marks next to the ones I need to do. And honestly, if I was doing one for events, I could also, once I have my events scheduled, I could set up one of these and it's a visual checklist instead of like those ordered rows, which depending on how your brain works, I like those. Um, but you could use this as kind of a visual checklist. So there we go, Pickle Peep. Let me know if this was helpful, if you're enjoying it on Mind Maps. They really are a very powerful tool. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know, comment down below. Do you use my maps in your business? Are you inspired now to use my maps in your business? Are you more of this kind of visual person versus like just the straight text documents? Do you need your organization to be pretty? Lots of people like that do that. And then I will see you in the next one. Make sure if you enjoyed, give this video a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when our new videos come out. We are in a sprint right now. This is video number 30, 31, something like that. Out of 90, we are officially one third of the way. Woo! <laughs> and I will see you on the next one for Handmade How. I'm Melissa Pickle. Have an epic day while you're building your epic business.